We are back with another DTF hack, and this one I'm pretty pumped about. I've been pretty pumped about all of them, but this one I'm really excited to put to the test. So we are actually going to use a cooking griddle for the curing process. So if you guys own a home iron, or maybe you're using your Cricut Easy Press, this is gonna help you cure the powder. Hi, I'm Crystal with Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the notification bell down below, as well as the subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of our crafting tutorials. If you guys have been watching our DTF hack series, you guys are going to love this one. We are absolutely loving the DTF hack. We've tried it with the inkjet printer. We've tried it on black garments using the white HTV. If you guys have not seen this video, make sure you guys check it out. This is the wash test. That's why I wore it today. I wanted to show you guys, this has been through the wash and it changed zero. Not at all to the color, the HTV, any of the stuff. It is perfect. I love this hack. It is 100% tried and true. So if you guys want to be able to do this hack here, this is sublimation, a DTF hack on a dark garment. Make sure you guys check this video out. I'll have it linked above. Like I said, we have tested out so many different ways with the DTF pack using the inkjet printer, on the dark garments, all of the things. Today we are doing a white t-shirt, um, but this one here in particular, I thought this one would be perfect for you guys that are using a home iron or maybe your Cricut Easy Press because we're gonna be able to cure those powers. I hope we're gonna be able to cure those with a home griddle. So this is one that you use in the kitchen. You could grab them for around $24 at Walmart. I found one as low as $22 on Amazon. I'll link both of those down below just to give you an example. We were actually gifted this one completely free from a family friend. So always check with family and friends, you know, grandma, she may have one. This is honestly from like the 80s. We're, we're fortunate for it, we're super excited. You could check yard sales, you could check the secondhand stores and all of those things so you can grab it even cheaper. Just make sure you be careful, be safe, um, make sure everything is working properly. Don't leave nothing plugged in when you're not around. This one, for example, when I plugged it in, smoke went everywhere. It's like burning off because we have it at such a high heat. I actually set it at 385. This one in particular goes up to 400 degrees, which is perfect for sublimation. And I put it on around 385, like I said. And so I've been letting this guy heat up, which is burning off some old stuff and all of that. It's been sitting for a while, so my room smoked out. So definitely make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. You guys can do this in the garage with the door open, honestly. So I'm really excited if this works, this is gonna be perfect and super easy, especially for somebody with a home iron. Now, if you guys follow along with this video, I've actually realized when you're curing the powders, what you wanna do with your bigger heat press is get it at the 385, you wanna heat up that lower platen first, move that out of the way and then set it on the platen, obviously, the glossy side down design up and it will cure those powders but definitely heat the bottom platen first for around 20 seconds or so and that will help heat that up to that 385 and help cure those powders and melt them down so i really think that this is going to work so a few things that i have with this is heat gloves so i've got heat resistant gloves to be safe use some oven mitts whatever you got i've got tweezers to be able to move this and get it off of there um, i've got parchment paper heat resistant tape my t-shirt of course when it comes to the dtf hack Basically, you have a, you're turning your sublimation printer into a DTF printer, which can cost you thousands of dollars. And it's perfect. This is literally DTF. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for somebody that's making 100 t-shirts a day, but if this is something you're a crafter, you're selling a few here and there, or you're making them for family and friends or yourself, this is an amazing hack to allow you to have the DTF. It is 100% DTF in my eyes. So I've got those. My thinking with the parchment paper is, I am nervous about sticking that transfer film directly to the griddle. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably put down a piece of parchment paper. You could use a Teflon uh, sheet if you want to. For example, if you look at my press, I actually have, you may not be able to see it from that distance, but I actually have a Teflon cover that's made for that. So a Teflon sheet over this would be great, but I'm gonna try parchment paper to, today, just to be safe, all right? <laughs> You guys let me know in the comments below if you guys have a griddle at the house that you're about to pull out and put to test, or if you guys are gonna run out and snag one. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I thought today too, I'm gonna ask you guys a few fun questions along the way. So make sure you guys participate in that because I love reading your guys' comments down below. You guys are such a fun group. Our YouTube community is amazing. So I give you guys a huge shout out. All right, here we go. So over here on designbundles.net, this is the bundle I'm actually using. So we have the phenomenal patriotic 
bundle coming out. It is $19. It is worth over $227. Now keep in mind, these guys expire. So currently while I'm recording this, you have 49 days, but by the time you're seeing it, it's gonna be even less. So this is gonna go away before the 4th of July. So make sure you guys snag it now, snag it early, start working on those projects. Inside of this bundle, you guys are gonna find bundles inside of bundles. They're so much fun. You're gonna be able to make t-shirts. You can do your party decor. Um, you could create tumblers. There's just so much stuff. I wanted to show you guys these tumblers here. You could sublimate. Or if you guys are into making those Libby glasses with your Cricut or Silhouette, you guys are gonna love these as well. Another one is this tiered tray that you guys can make with your Glow Forge. So this guy is fully loaded with tons and tons of designs. From this bundle, this is the one I'm actually gonna be using today. And today, on top of this DTF hack, I'm going to be doing a pocket in the front. I'm gonna be doing the back of the t-shirt. Now, what I actually really want to do, and I'm finally gonna do it. I've told you guys long enough, I'm gonna get the bigger sheets. I've seen some of you guys recommend that you buy the roll and you just cut them down. And I think I possibly may do that as well, just depending on what I find for the best bang for my buck. And so I'm gonna be getting the bigger sheets, so stay tuned, we're gonna do that. So today we are working with the same eight and a half by 11, and then um, I've got my DTF powder. Everything I'm using today, the exact stuff is linked down below. So make sure you guys check that out as well. So we're gonna be using this design right here for the back of the t-shirt. Once again, I really wish I had 11 by 17 because we could have made this so much bigger, but we're putting it to the test today. So we're doing this and then on the pocket, I'm gonna do this one because I thought they matched with the sunglasses and everything else. So we're gonna do this one on the front pocket and I just thought it would be fun. We're gonna do two pieces on one t-shirt. I'm doing a white t-shirt because this the DTF hack uh, actually pops so much better on a white t-shirt. And the really cool thing is you can use 100% cotton. You can use whatever garment you would like. You don't have to just do like sublimation and have a polyester. Now, for example, this is a black t-shirt and it's actually on white HTV. Like I said, we have this video linked above for you guys and also in the description. Now that I've downloaded my designs, I'm gonna come over here in Canva. I do prefer to use Canva whenever it comes to sizing stuff out. If I need to adjust anything, it just makes it so easy for me. So I've got my Canva open on the eight and a half by 11 because that's what I'm using is the eight and a half by 11 sheets. So I'm gonna to go to where my designs are and I'm just gonna do a drag and drop. So we're gonna be using this one right here and I'm just going to grab it and drop it. And then we're also gonna be using this one here. So I'll do the same thing. I honestly prefer the drag and drop when it comes to Canva. You could definitely um, come over here to upload and grab them there as well, but I just prefer the drag and drop. What I'm gonna do now is click on add a page. So I have a second one. I'm gonna move the second design down here because I'm gonna size that for my pocket. So for this one, what I'm wanting to do is size this out as big as I possibly can. So I'm gonna do that here. What I've done here is I've really stretched this out as big as I possibly can and I have it centered here. Whenever it comes to this DTF hack, we're gonna be taping it on a piece of copy paper or sublimation paper. You wanna make sure you're leaving yourself a nice gap at the top. Don't get that design all the way up there. You could preferably get it down at the bottom because where it's first gonna grab it, it could smear the design. So I always just make sure it's either centered or closer to the bottom. Now let's go ahead and move on to our pocket design. For your pocket, you want to do around four inches or so, so I'm just gonna grab this guy. And whenever you start to move this, you can see the numbers pop up there, and I'm just gonna get that around four inches. We're just gonna go down right about there. So we got four by two, looks good to me. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and center this guy up. If I had several shirts, I would obviously get multiple on here so I was not wasting my film, because you can't reuse this and all that. But I just have one and I'm okay with it. So now what we're gonna simply do is just go to shape here. We're going to go to download and I'm actually going to be choosing both pages. So it says all pages here. And then I'm just simply going to hit download. Now that we have saved these to our computer, we're getting ready to print them. So I'm actually using my Sawgrass printer today. I'm actually using the Sawgrass SG-1000 because that's the one I have plugged in and ready to go. But you can use your Sawgrass SG-500. You could definitely do this with your converted Epsons and all of those things. You just simply would click on your file and go to file um, and you would just make sure you mirror it and print it from there. With the Sawgrass, you want to use the print manager. So what I'm gonna be doing is using that Sawgrass smart folder that is on your desktop when you first download everything from your Sawgrass. So I've found my two files and just brought them to the desktop. You can actually select both of those at the same time. We're going to grab them, drag them, drop them in here. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to print these. So we need to make sure we have our mirror turned on. And then I've got it chose polyester and all of those things. Now you can see I've got both pages here. So I can look at those and everything is good to go. Now the thing that I have to do is I have to make sure that I prep both pages. 
What I probably would do is actually print these one at a time because you can actually reuse this paper with that tape. So you could actually just print this one at a time. But today I'm gonna try to load two at a time just to see if it works. So we're about to find out if it's gonna jam or not. So we're gonna try to do that. But honestly to save, just print them out one at a time and reuse the paper and the tape. So you're gonna get a piece of paper we're gonna go ahead and take, so make sure you do not hit print until you have these in the printer. So I need two pieces of that film, all right? In the meantime, I have this guy heated up and ready to go. I'm gonna grab two pieces of film, one and two. I'm gonna go ahead and grab me a piece of that tape. I'm just gonna measure out from my paper there, I tear it off. I just like to use more of like a washi tape or a light painter's tape. This is a craft tape that I actually found at Michael's. I'm gonna try it today, because I usually use my purple craft tape. So you wanna get just a little bitty bit at the top. So really minimal up there. You're just gonna get that down. We're gonna flip it over. Sometimes I like to just fold my tape. And usually these papers with tape last me for several uses, like I said. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this guy. You want to put it on here matte side up. So you have a glossy side and the matte. So you want the glossy side against your paper. And we're gonna line this up. So just whatever's your easiest way. So if you need to stand these guys up like so, you can do that. And then just get your initial tape in the center there and work from one side to the next. I'm just trying to make sure everything is staying straight. You just wanna make sure it's not wonky on one side to the next because it's gonna get weird in the printer. Once you have that guy straight, you wanna make sure any sort of tape or anything that you get it folded over and pushed down or simply just trim it off. I'm just gonna kind of bend mine over. There we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is you can see we have this like that, right? So we're gonna put it with the paper side up, tape side in. So I'm gonna go ahead and load our first one and get ready to prep our next one. Now that I have my next one ready to go, same thing, paper up, tape side in. We're gonna load this one. I've got it shut. So now what we're gonna do is come back here and hit print. While those are printing, you wanna go ahead and start to prep up because you need your powder ready to go ASAP. You're gonna get a piece of parchment paper, coffee paper down here, and then you're gonna go ahead and get your powders open and ready. Because your inks are gonna dry pretty quick, so if you guys have honestly seen this piece before, just sit back and enjoy. All right, so we got our first one. I'm so excited, look at this, how cute is that? Adorable. So what you wanna do now is remove it. So we're just gonna carefully, quickly do this because that other one's not gonna take very long at all. We're gonna peel this off and then we're gonna start to put our powder. So we're gonna go ahead and coat this guy really quick. I'll grab that one in a minute. Let's work one side to the next. So you get you some powder going here because everything's gonna go back in. All right, so you're just gonna go from one side to the next and make sure everything is getting coated. And I'm trying to pay attention to my corners because you know, if y'all have been following, y'all have seen where I've done a tote bag, it's like the corners. I kind of wonder if I'm not getting my corners good enough. Now I've seen people do the second coats as well. I have not, and I have found success just doing the one coat. But if you feel like you need two coats, you can definitely do that as well. So here's this one. We are going to take a parchment, let's be safe. We're gonna get our parchment paper down on here and we're gonna put this on here. It needs to be on there for one minute. So I've got this guy at 385, all right? So here we go, let me grab my next one. Yay! So we wanna be quick so this guy doesn't get dry. We're gonna remove it. Maybe, I'm like, ah! It's never taken me this long to get one off. I think I'm so excited. There we go. All right, I'm just gonna do this and we'll get all that powder in a second. We're just coating everything. Now what you would do to do your second coat, as soon as this was done, right there, you'd come quickly back over here to hear your powder and you would do it again. Once again, we actually tested it too on another thing. It didn't do um, anything for us, but like I said, I'm not sure the other people's methods, but for me, you only need one coat. Yay, it is so done. I don't know if you guys can see this yet or not. Here we go, it worked. It worked, I'm pumped. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna smooth this guy. We're gonna get that there and I'll bring this up so you guys can see. So you guys can completely see that those powders are melted. So if you guys have seen our previous videos where we were doing this, it was not melting my powders down. And that's where, like I said, I discovered even hovering above, the heat was just not good enough. Now the really cool thing about this, for example, if you were doing the uh, black garment where you're gonna put it on HTV, you would do this, but you're gonna be able to, cause you need 
385 to 400 degrees for that sublimation ink to actually activate. So now my inks are activated. So when I use my Cricut Easy Press, I can press this at 300 degrees. So that's what's awesome. And that's what allows you to use your older Cricut Easy Presses or your mini Easy Press. I could get away with using my mini Easy Press with this, honestly. So now I'm gonna grab this one and show you guys, look at that, it works. And it works so fast, it melted it down quick. You definitely want that 60 seconds. You've seen, we got it going on. I'm gonna move my parchment. And so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna turn this guy off. All right, I've got it off. Now, if you guys will give me just a second, I'm gonna carefully and safely get this out of my way and get our Cricut Easy Press up here and heating up. All right, so while I clean this up, I'm gonna talk about this. I'm pumped. This is now my second favorite hack, I think. So you guys know that this was definitely number one. I love, love, love this one. So cool. Now I will say, obviously, this is gonna give you more of an HTV feel for this. So I do personally love the DTF hack on the white garment because it's real soft and everything too, which this is too, you get the point. It's gonna be individual pieces and not one big piece. Um, so I do love that, but I love the fact that we were able to work on the dark garments. But this right here that we can use a kitchen griddle, you can get them smaller. This is bigger, so that's gonna work for my 11 by 17s as well. So keep in mind and get whatever you need. But like I said, this is going to work with the little mini iron. I promise you that because you don't need the high heat. So we're gonna be doing 300 degrees for 20 seconds. Um, once again, this at the 385 is going to activate your sublimation inks, which is gonna allow you to use home iron, mini easy press. So if you guys have your sublimation printers, now we have been working on the DTF hack um, with with the inkjet. If you guys have not seen, we have actually accomplished that with the black inks. I have heard from you guys that the black inks is made from a different type of ink, like a pigment ink or something like that. You guys sound down below, you know what it is. Um, so that allows the black inks to work, amazing. So if you're just doing solid black, you can get away with this hack with your uh, inkjet printers. Before I get completely prepped up here with our t-shirt and our heat pad, I wanted to show you guys, if y'all did not catch my Timu Tamu, I don't know how you say it, Timu haul, um, I did get a little vacuum here. The reason why I got the vacuum, I've been seeing everybody with those desk vacuums, the DTF hack will leave grit here. I don't care how careful you are, you're getting it everywhere. And that's my one ugh, ick, if you will, <laughs> about the DTF hack, is that powder, it's just like glitter, okay? But I found this little desk, you could get these anywhere, honestly. But I'll link the one that I got down below. I love the neutral tones, but you can grab them on Amazon or wherever. And so I'm actually gonna run through here and and vacuum my space. Our Cricut Easy Press is ready to go. I'm gonna get our t-shirt here. Let's do the pocket first. So what we need to do is pull out any sort of moisture from the t-shirt, so let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this. It's gonna remove any sort of wrinkles. And where I'm gonna heat up the front, it's also gonna heat up the back. So I don't need to flip it around or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is do one side and then do the next. It takes around five seconds or so to do this. So we're just gonna go ahead and get one side to the next. So I'm super excited. So if you guys missed, recap, if you're gonna be using this, 385 for around one minute. And then for this, it's 300 degrees for 20 seconds. All right, so we've got that ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is use our tape measure to figure out my placement of where I'm going here. So the way that you usually want to do this is come down around three to four fingers. So I'm gonna come down four inches, and then usually I can look at this here as well. And you wanna just make sure you're not going underneath where your arm is. So we wanna make sure and kind of stay inside of this area here. Um, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and come in. I'm gonna come away from the arm probably about two inches or so. So we'll cut this down and we're gonna figure it out. So let me go ahead and grab my scissors. Oh, listen, I'm using all my Timu Tamu things. <laughs> you guys, tell me if I'm saying it right. I'm gonna say Timu, and you guys say you're saying it right. Timu? And if, you're, if I'm saying it wrong, say wrong. <laughs> all right, here we go. I'm gonna use my scissors. Once again, I got these as well. Super pumped about them. And they were a dollar something, a dollar something. So we're gonna go ahead and take this and just trim this guy down. Just get rid of that excess we don't need at all. Now the purpose of curing these powders is number one, if you're using sublimation, that's gonna activate those and you're using a you know a lower heat iron or something like that. If you're doing the hack with this, with the HTV, you wanna be able to apply that with lower heat. Um, but the other thing is if you wanna sell these, I can now sell these. I can put this in the mail, it's gonna go through there safely. You can see I can touch it and now I can sell these as part of my craft. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and kind of eyeball this here. I'm thinking somewhere right about there looks good to me. Now, since I've kind of cut this down too, I'm gonna use my tape dispenser. Once again, another find at the Temu. 
So I've got this. You guys have been loving my tape dispenser, but that one is from Amazon. I'll link up both Amazon and this one as well. But these were a dollar something. All right, so here we go. We're going to get that down. Now, since you do have this cover, you don't have to cover it with parchment. But when I use my Cricut Easy Press, I don't know why. I feel like I have to do this. Recently, I'm just, I worry about um, my, my Cricut Easy Press stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it. And then we're gonna go right on top. Hit go, 300 degrees for 20 seconds. Now you guys let me know in the comments below if this has been a fun hack for you guys, if y'all are pumped about it. Also, let me know what you guys think about our patriotic bundle. Are you guys a fan more of our bundles, our dollar event, or our marketplace? That was a question I wanted to ask today. We always wanna hear from you guys and learn a little bit more. So maybe you guys can sound down below. What has been your favorite find? Once again, has it been from our bundles? Has it been from our dollar event? Has it been from the marketplace? What do you guys think about our changes recently with our dollar event? I want to know all the details down below. The next thing that is very important, if you guys have not been following along with our DTF hack, make sure you let it completely cool. I feel like everybody in the background, I feel like I'm with the class, right? I can hear you guys right now saying, let it cool. So the next thing that we have to do is just completely let this cool. Do not try to peel this guy warm or hot, or you're going to peel it up with you. You're going to have a mess. Let it completely cool. So we're going to let that guy completely cool down. And I'm almost trying to decide, I think I'm going to leave this cover on because if I take the cover off, I'm gonna have to make sure I put a protective um, film, like the parchment between here and the mat so it doesn't mess up. So I'm gonna leave it on right now. So we'll completely let the front and back pick, uh, cool at the same time. Now let's go ahead and flip it over carefully. Come to the back of our t-shirt, get everything nice and straight, okay? So let's go ahead and go over here to our design. And when it comes to this, now the other thing about the curing, you guys know I've talked about you before. You don't have to cure if you're going to just be going straight down. You're not selling them. You're not doing all those things. You could definitely, you don't have to cure it. If you have a heat press like the Cricut Easy Press 2 and all that goes up to the 385, you don't have to cure it. But you definitely want to get it down and don't be shuffling it. But if you want to be able to cure these, that way I can stick it in a drawer. I can use it later. Or you want to be a little bit more safer and I have a little bit more wiggle room. That's the purpose of the curing. All right. I could trim that down. I'm not going to. I'm gonna go ahead and figure this out. Now, when we come on the back of our shirts, you wanna come down around six inches or so. So if you need to measure, take an old t-shirt that you have purchased from a store or boutique or whatever, and you can look at that, take your tape measure and figure out that distance as well, something that you're comfortable with. I'm thinking something we're about here. You have to remember hair coming down. You don't wanna to be too, too low. And then I'm just centering up, same thing. I know where that neck tag is. We're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get me a couple pieces of heat tape because there's nothing to protect us. It's not like HGV where the film is sticky. So we're gonna go ahead and tape it down. All right, now sometimes I don't, especially with a bigger heat press, but with a Cricut Easy Press where something can shift, I'd rather be safe. So we're gonna do the same thing, 300 degrees for 20 seconds, and this should completely go over my entire design. That's what I love about the 10 by 12. If you were gonna get one Cricut Easy Press, I recommend the 10 by 12. I used to recommend the nine by nine, because you could do a couple sections go for the big one and call it a day because you can do anything at that point. So um, I love it. It does a lot of our bigger t-shirt projects as well. All right, there we go. Boom. Perfect. And now we're just going to let this guy completely cool. So to do so, we can definitely just pick it up. Look at this so far. And I haven't even filled the film, but I'm so pumped for it. So cute. Moment of truth, I'm so excited for this. So I do highly recommend that if you're doing front and back, leave that plastic coating and flip it over, do the back side at the same time. So that way you're not risking this going onto your mat. Just leave it alone and peel them at the same time. I've completely cooled my shirt. If you just kind of do this, you'll let it completely cool down. So what we're gonna do is get a corner here and slowly peel and oh my gosh, look at it. It is amazing. I highly recommend if you have not done the DTF hack front and back, check that out. So don't think that you just, the DTF is just the, you know, big designs. You could be doing pockets too. We haven't done a pocket with this. This is cute. I'm so excited. All right, let's flip it over. And honestly, this was an okay size. I was nervous once again, remember? The 11 by 17, and this looks good. This is a small Gildan, just in case you guys were wondering. I love these Gildans because they're a dollar something. By the way, if y'all have not checked at the Dollar Tree, you can grab um, t-shirts over there. They have belt canvas, they have all kinds of things, $1.25. Look at this, oh my gosh, check that out. That is so cute, and like I said, that is perfect on, um, I think it's a perfect size, honestly. 
Oh my gosh, like I said, I feel like every time we do a DTF hack, I'm like, oh my God, this is my favorite. I thought this was our favorite, but this is my new favorite. The front and the back of it is just, ugh. This is so cool that we can actually use a griddle to pull this off, like no way. I cannot believe that we can use a home griddle. And like I said, go to a yard sale, go to a secondhand store. You probably have one at the house. Just be safe, guys. Use the proper um, heat gloves or the tweezers if you need to. You can see that mine kind of curled up. I was able to grab that, but be safe doing that. Check your grandma's house, all right? I'm sure somebody has one of these things. Or go down and grab one for 24 bucks and use your little mini iron or your Cricut Easy Press or whatever. I am so, so excited. Keep in mind, we're continuing to work and improve the, um, the inkjet. We're really working on that. We're trying to find a solution. But for right now, you can achieve it with the black inks. So here's the front. And then here is the back. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit so you guys can really see that. So cute, I'm gonna bring this one. Hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better, but I'm so pumped. I know, I can't get over it. Ah, I'm just crazy. But like I said, you guys let me know. Do you want more? Do you want us to continue to find and improve these things? I need to know all of the details down below. Before I end this, I have a really fun question for you guys. Now, I'm, I'm reaching for the ladies here, but I'm not sure. Guys may use dry shampoo too. You guys let me know in the comments below, do you guys wash your hair every single day? Is it every other day? Can you rock your hair for three or four days or is it a week? I'm gonna be honest, guys. Sometimes I can rock my hair for a week. So today was one of those days I was dry shampooing and I thought, you know what, am I alone on this? Because I had got dry shampoo all over my black t-shirt and everywhere and I thought, I'm gonna ask you guys. So please, sound down below. You can just simply put one, three, four, and I know exactly what you guys are talking about. Do you guys rock dry shampoo? And if so, please tell me, what is your favorite dry shampoo, right? Mine's the dry bar. I get the big one, the extra large one. Um, but you guys let me know, what's your favorite? I need to know these. That's why I'm like, I'm, I'm helping you guys, right? You guys help me with the dry shampoo. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this all the way through. We absolutely love you guys and love the support that you guys give us here on the channel. We have so much fun. So if you guys are new here, make sure you guys consider hitting that subscribe button as well as that notification bell because you don't wanna miss any of our crafting tutorials.